What is going on traders? Drumber than here bringing you some more Pokemon Go PvP content and today we're talking about the Fantasy Cup which takes place in the Great League. Well currently it does, it's been in the Ultra League before. So 1500 CP, only Dragon, Steel and Fairy type Pokemon are allowed which on its surface might sound a little bit limited because Steel typing beats Dragon and Fairy like it resists the moves. But there is a decent selection of Fairy type and Dragon type Pokemon that can handle Steel typings so it's not as limited as you might originally think. It is. Now there's a couple of interesting Pokemon I wanted to talk about here which I haven't seen too much coverage on and one of those is using Shadow Scizor as a safe swap in this cup. It's actually really strong for what people are currently running, what people tend to bring in against it, um, at least from what I'm seeing. And then also I'm going to talk about Shadow Mawal which I've never used before in the Great League. I had a regular Mawal built um, quite a while ago but I decided to finally power up a Shadow variant that's got not terrible IVs for PvP, so and we're going to be running Fire Fang on that. It did get access to Fairy Wind for increased energy generation, but honestly, we're using this thing as an anti steel. Fire Fang Shadow Mawile can shred through steel types, especially if it's got like one shield just to back itself up a little bit. Now, on Scizor, the move set we're running is going to be Bullet Punch as the fast move because super effective against fairies and neutral to dragons, you know, pretty self explanatory. And then we're going to be running Night Slash for nice spammy damage output which is going to be neutral against most of the steel types we're going to be seeing and then we're also running trailblaze as the other charge move because the amount of azumarils in this cup is quite high and also the odd top of finny and trailblaze is just nice to surprise them because people are saving their shields for other pokemon a lot of the options in this cup aren't super bulky so when people bring in azumarill they're not expecting to have to shield because even if you're running like iron head or something on scissor azumarill can take that pretty comfortably trailblaze is the only threatening move and they just don't seem to be expecting it. Like, nine times out of ten, um, Azumarill is going to let that Trailblaze through. Um, once or twice, they are going to shield up, but that's completely fine because you get a guaranteed attack buff as well, which is going to put increased pressure on them because those neutral bullet punches are going to start adding up. Now, if you are running it as a safe swap, I do recommend Shadow Scizor. Um, the extra bulk on non-Shadow Scizor is nice, but I think that the increased damage pressure from the Night Slashes from the bullet punches is preferable by running a shadow specifically um mawile you really can do either way like i wanted to try shadow mawile since especially we're focusing on like fast move damage output um but honestly registeel matchup is better for non shadow mawile because you can survive a focus blast very comfortably you can survive a zap cannon comfortably and they're not gonna be able to lock on you down whereas shadow mawile you have to commit a shield for the focus blast or zap cannon it'll take you out um and that's quite a big difference, really. Like, you're going to be running into Registeels. That's a that's a matchup you're going to be trying to get. You want your Mawile against Registeel. And that's one specific situation where having non-Shadow really is preferable. In most other situations, um, I'd say Shadow is better, though, for the extra damage output over time. Speaking of bulk, we're rounding out the team with Azumarill because we need more bulk on this team. Shadow Mawile is pretty squishy. Scizor is pretty squishy. You need something that you're not going to be too worried about committing shields into. So we're bringing Azumarill. Um, Bubble got buffed this season. It's damage output, which is noticeable on Azumarill. It does really make them add up a little bit faster in a lot of those matchups. Um, we're going to choose Hydro Pump and Play Rough as the charge moves. There is a strong argument to make for Ice Beam, especially with the number of Flygons around um, currently this, this time around in Fantasy Cup, which Flygon's very strong, by the way. But one nice thing about this team is, is that Mawile is the only thing that has to worry about it. Scizor can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, like Flygon doesn't want to take a Night Slash even from an unboosted Shadow Scizor. Um, Azumarill can hang out with Flygon just fine. So as long as you keep Mawile away from it, you're not going to be looking too bad if you are seeing Flygons around. Azumarill also has the benefit of covering the uh, any fire types that really Scizor and Mawile do not want to see. So I think it balances out nicely. If you have Tapu Fini in the Great League, you can use that instead of Azumarill. In fact, I'd probably recommend Tapu Fini um, instead of Azumarill on this team. If you had access to one, I personally don't have access to a Great League Tapu Fini, um, which I've tried, <laughs> tried to get one rolled under that 1500 CP, but that is... Not an easy thing to achieve. Another way to run this team would be to put Azumarill on the lead and then use Scizor as you say, swap it up Mawile in the back. It makes you a little bit more secure against a fire type um, that might be on the lead. Because like I said, if you get something running fire, fast move damage on your lead that isn't an opposing Shadow Mawile, 
you're going to have a bad time. Like, if you see an opposing Mawal on the lead, you just stay in and just you're both fire each, firefang each other down. And then Scizor's probably going to be looking pretty strong in the back. But, like I said, Turtonator running Incinerate on the lead is going to decimate you running this line. And I haven't seen it on the lead before. Um, I think I ran into one Turtonator that was in the middle of a team. Um, but if you do see it on the lead, it's going to be bad news. And you're just going to get absolutely... You're just going to probably just instant loss to be honest, but every team's got that Pokemon that if you see that one wrong thing on the lead, you're just going to be absolutely screwed by it anyway, so I wouldn't stress too much about that. For a lot of the matchups that I saw running this team, Azumarill on the lead and then Mawile in the back might be better because I saw a lot of Pokemon on lead that I was specifically having to swap out of um, Azumarill into. It's definitely up to preference. If you're seeing a lot of Flygons on the lead, you're seeing like a Zoomeral on the lead, you're better off leading your own Azumarill. If you're seeing, you know, you're seeing your Steel types, you're seeing other things like that, then maybe you're better off with Mawal on the lead. Just take it on what you see for your ELO in the Great League. Basically, the choice we've made with Mawal on the lead is that if you're running Firefang on Mawal, you're choosing for Mawal to struggle with the Dragon types, but do very well against the Fairies and the Steels. If you're running uh, Fairy Wind and then something like Play Rough and Iron Head as your charge moves on Mawile, then you're making the choice to be strong against Fairies and Dragons and struggling against Steel types. So it's really just what you fit, how Mawile fits into your team. And really, it can go either way in this cup. It's quite versatile, to be honest. It's probably the best chance it gets to shine currently in the Great League Mawile. It does get a little bit underused, I'd say, for its interest in typing and not terrible move sets. With that being said, if you like the look of the team, hit the like button if you haven't already, and let's take a look at some actual matchups and talk about them. So, Shadow Mawal, Mirror Match lead. We're going to stay in. If they're running uh, Fairy Wind, this is very, very good for you. They're running Fire Fang like we are, so it's neutral. We're just going to throw a power up punch as soon as we get there. If you lose this CMP tie, I don't recommend you shield. Just let it go through. Even if they then shield the opposing power up punch back, you just bubble them down with a zoom roll and take your energy advantage into the next matchup that follows. They, for some reason, we should have simultaneously KO'd in that situation. Don't know why the opponent didn't throw another fast move after the power-up punches were exchanged. Doesn't matter. We get switch advantage. That's fine. We've got Scizor to bring into this Azumarill. And they are going to shield up this Trailblaze, which is a bit of unfortunate, but we should have predicted that they would. Just because we'd already got through one whole Pokemon on their team, and we, our team looks very fast move pressury right now. They don't realize we've got Azumarill in the back. And that means that they want to start using their shields because if we've got like a charmer or something in the back, there's just a chance we're getting fast moved down um, if they don't start using their shields on something. But they don't shield up the Night Slash that we then try to bait with, which is unfortunate. So we're going to try and catch on Azumarill, which we pull off. Quite happy with that. Just preserve some energy and a little bit of health on that Scizor, just depending for whatever's in the back. And it's Escavalier. So this is going to be fantastic for us because we're going to be able to force a shield with the... We could just force a shield with the Hydro Pump, but I think we're just going to go for the Play Rough because they're probably going to shield at this point. Um, Escavalier is pretty squishy anyway, and it means, yeah, we get the shield bait. It's a bit risky, that, because if they don't shield that, it's kind of bad news for us. But now we've got the shield off of them. We've got a Night Slash loaded on Scizor, which will KO Escav from this range. We are quite attack-weighted. Escav is quite squishy in the Great League. And this is now going to be a fast move down race between the bit of a zoom roll and our Scizor. We just get it, take the win. GG. So a bit close that matchup, but a win is a win. We're not going to complain with it. Next matchup, Magnazone lead. Of course, absolutely glorious for Mawile, and we've got to keep it away from Azumarill. They're going to say swap their Azumarill, and we decide just to bring in Scizor straight away. Oftentimes, if they swap in Azumarill into Mawile, Scizor is going to be the answer, because Trailblaze comes by pretty quick. Look at that. Bang. Nice big chunk of damage. Guaranteed attack buff. Now we just shield once, and we bullet punch all the way down they actually throw a play rough, so we've got even more comfortable of a farm down, because they're definitely not going to get to another charge move. And now we've got a ton of energy to threaten almost anything that could come in. There are one or two things that resist both Trailblaze and Night Slash in this cup, but not very many. So, straight for Night Slash, does big damage to Magnazone. We get the attack buff there as well. So this Scizor is going to be absolutely monstrous damage. Are they going to shield up? They are. Right, Mawal cannot take a wild charge again this is a matchup where probably non-shadow mawile is preferable but you know what shield up get the farm down entirely and they've got galarian wheezing in the back a lot of people are using galarian wheezing as an azumarill counter because it has access to sludge which is quite spammy spammier than you'd think it is 
Um, but that's not really that big of a problem for us. We decided to swap out. We were a bit worried about taking an overheat, which we should have stayed in. But that was a bad call by us because either they're running play rough and brutal swing, in which case they're going to struggle to take out Mawal. But if they were running um, overheat, they would have nerfed their attack into the ground to take out Mawal. And then Azumra would have had a much more comfortable matchup here. So silly play by us, but I don't think it's going to punish us here. I think we're just going to get away with the farm down with Mawal here before they get another move off. And it's going to be GG's to us. Right, Azumra lead. Again, this is a reason why you might want to lead your own Azumra, but then that leaves the back of teams to be a little bit sketchy because you feel like you've got to stop in in the Azumra mirror match. You don't get to see anything that they've got in the back or try and pull anything out. We tend to safe swap Scizor into Azumarill leads when we've got Mawal because then if we end up with Azumarill via Azumarill towards the end of the game, that's completely fine. For us, it's just a very neutral matchup. We're going to end up CMP time with this Skarmory, which is really nice for us because this means they might shield this up. They don't. We get the attack. Oh, do we shield up? We got the attack buff, yeah. Shield up, bullet punch them down, and now we've got switch advantage just because Mawal's quite... Um, they might have something specific that they want to line up either against or towards Mawal in the back. Zumaro bubbles us down, but you can see that the bullet punches we got in puts us ahead in this matchup because they've got energy, yes, but we've got um, a whole play rough's worth of extra health. So a pretty decent situation for us here. We're just going to start throwing these play roughs and we're hoping that they've got something steel in the back, perhaps Reggie Steel, perhaps uh, Stone Face, maybe even a Charm, and maybe they've got something like Wiggly Tough back there. Who knows? Let's wait. And see, I don't actually remember this matchup. I'm not sure what they've got in the back there. We lose CMP tie. Doesn't matter. Even if for some reason this Kyoda's, that opposing Azumarill is now in Fire Fang down range. So if they shield this up, we're swapping straight to Mawal. Either way, they don't. Bring in the Mawal. It's a, it's a sand slash. Good Lord, they must have been hoping that we had Fairy Wind instead of um, <laughs> instead of Fire Fang. They absolutely melt them, take the win, GG. Register lead. They're going to stop in. They're going to wait and see what move we've got. In fact, they might even play this out. Maybe they're double weak to fire. Some teams, like I said, our team's double weak to fire um, on the lead. So we're just going to go for the power-up punch, start ramping up that damage, and we're just going to shield this up. Like I said, if this is a non-Shadow Mawal you're running, you can no-shield the Zap Cannon or the Focus Blast, and you'd be completely fine. Because it's Shadow, it's worth the shield, and farm them down. Look at all the health we've got there. Haxorus coming in. Nice, unusual, spicy pick. I think this is the only Haxorus I saw running this line. And we're just going to stop in because we want to get a Zoomerol lined up here um, specifically. We don't really want to pivot out into Scizor and stuff. And also, if maybe they're running like a Charmer in the back, in which case, you know, Scizor's going to be looking pretty solid. It's Escavalier, so they would have absolutely been melted by Mawal as well. But no pressure. Scizor can do just fine in this matchup. See, Night Slash does a huge chunk of damage. And now we can probably just bubble down this Escavalier. We actually know Shield the Earth. Because if it was a draw run, we'd have been fine. But they give up and surrender after we call the no, the no Shield. Another Magnazone lead. Fantastic for us. They're going to pivot out into Lucario. We bring in Azumarill. And the opponent surrenders right there. They don't want the smoke. They don't want to mess about. They know they've been there. Uh... Sometimes you just... The opposing team just hard rolls against you. And you just don't want to mess about with that. You don't want to waste your time or whatever. No problem at all. No disrespect to the opponent. GG's all the same. Um, Zoomerill lead. Swap into the Scizor. Bastiodon comes into meters. Right. Throw a Trailblaze. You want to buff your attack. You want those bullet punchers getting stronger and stronger. You want to pressure them to start shielding or make them throw quicker. Once we get one attack buff, build up. Go for Night Slash. Maybe they uh, feel the need to shield up the second one. They don't. That's fine. But we want to get one more Night Slash in. We're going to get it. Definitely worth going for this rather than one more Trailblaze because that wouldn't have risked ko in i don't think farmers down entirely this means we have to bring in a zoomerol because if we bring in mawal they just throw a flamethrower they one shot us or we have to give up a shield just bring in a zoomerol see how this goes see what they've got in the back bubble down still got two shields to commit into whatever situations come up here register still lined up against a zoomerol a zoomerol lined up against mawal this is not looking good for us i think the only real situation where this comes oh so they've not got ice beam to bait us that's you know what? I remember this matchup, and we managed to just pull off the most crazy win condition, if I remember this rightly. So, we shield bait with power up punch. This means now that Iron Head should get them into Fire Fang down range because they don't have Ice Beam. 
um, just to get that extra chip damage on us a little bit quicker. They need to no shield this, which I think they do, yep. We firefang them down entirely. Now we need to swap and catch a focus blast on a zoom roll, which we, we actually, if this is focus blast, this is our win condition. This is how we can pull this game off. It is the focus blast, that's fantastic. And what this is about right now is just maybe get the shield, but it's about that bit of extra bubble chip damage just to put them into fire fang down range. They no shield the hydro pump anyway. The opponent surrenders there. If they had a shield at the hydro pump, the um the fire fang damage and power up punch buff should have been enough just to let us fan them down anyway. So GG's very happy with that win. Now I think this next matchup is yeah, Flygon. So Flygon, you're gonna say swap into Scizor. A lot of opponents don't handle this particularly well. Like I said, Night Slash is gonna put a lot of pressure on them. They are quite squishy. Bullet punches are adding up fairly quickly. So we get a shield out of them. Very, very nice. We get the attack buff. Wonderful. You love to see the bullet put the night slash boost proc makes Scizor even stronger of a say swap. They're gonna pivot out into Galarian Weezing, which is not a good pivot. We're running steel fast move. This is gonna absolutely annihilate them. They do let the night slash go through. We're just gonna shield up. No worries at all. It's worth shielding up even just a brutal swing because we're already buffed. The pressure from this scissor right now is absolutely immense. Another one coming through. Flygon's going to have to shield if it wants to take out our scissor. And now Flygon's in bubble down range. We've got um, switch advantage. And between a full health Azumarill and Mawile, even with no shields, we should be able to handle pretty much anything in the back on this opponent's team. They're going to manage to get, I think it's a Scorching Sands off here, which... May debuff us, may not. We'll just have to see. Doesn't debuff us. What's in the back? It's wiggly tough. We just bring in Mawile here and we're just going to go straight to the Iron Head just to ensure a nice, quick, clean KO. And that's going to be GG's. Sometimes you're going to win safe swap situations just because uh, Night Slash procs that buff. But honestly, that opponent's team was quite weak to Scizor. To be honest, Flygon was their best answer and they wanted to get away from the Mawile as well. Another Shadow Mawile on the lead. Mirror Match just go straight for the Power Up Punch here. We lose CMP tie, that's completely fine. We're going to let it go through. We should just survive this because we've got quite decent PvP IVs. The opponent does not have very good PvP IVs on their Shadow Shiny Mawa, which is a nice flex for them, by the way, but it does mean that we KO them. We get switch advantage. Perfect. We've got Scizor lined up against Wigglytuff. And what are they going to have in the back? Are we even going to see? We're going to go straight for the Trailblaze. Go for the KO or go for the damage buff. Uh, knock them out, what's in the back, it's Gramble, we're just going to be able to fast move them down entirely actually, very quick, straight to the point match, I think the whole matchup is like a minute long when it's not sped up, GG's, another fly gone, again see, a zoom roll lead would be beneficial for one of these matchups, but pivot to Scizor, what we're going to pull out, I think we get to the Night Slash faster than opponents expect us to, because a lot of them don't react before we force a shield out of them with the Night Slash, but not going to complain with that, Worth a shield if they're built up towards Scorching Sands because it will absolutely decimate you. If they do just throw a Dragon Claw, you can no shield and you can take it fairly comfortably. There aren't many charge moves that Scizor can take, but it can take a Dragon Claw from Flygon fairly comfortably. Um, they catch a Night Slash on Azumarill, which is a real shame. It would have been really nice to get Trailblaze on that thing by surprise, especially since they'd already committed a shield, but we're not going to get there after using the energy on one Night Slash that they managed to catch. So, we bring in probably our own Azumarill here, yeah, because their Flygon stayed in quite a long time in the opening matchup. So, it might be in Firefang downrange. It is quite squishy, even though it is resisted. So, go for the par go for the play roughs. Deal with this Azumarill, because there's also a good chance they have a good Azumarill counter in the back because they had a uh, Flygon on the lead. So we keep going here. Tapu Finn is in the back. This is absolutely awful for us. We've we've just lost this game. Like Tapu Finn is very strong in this cup. They aren't very common, but this team does not handle Tapu Finn very well. Um, that water gun really adds up against um, Shadow Mawal and Shadow Scizor just because we're so squishy. Oh, maybe not. They let the Iron Head through. Can we clutch it up? They are going to take us out with this Surf, but Azuma is going to be able to bubble down. They do still have a shield advantage. The Flygon's in bubble down range. The Flygon... No, it's not in bubble down range. What am I talking about? We're, okay, no, we can't win this game. No, they'll just take us out with the Scorching Suns. I thought the Flygon was lower. Absolutely not. I even said earlier that I thought it was in Firefang down range. That is not Firefang down range. So, GG's to the opponent. Assume we're a lead.
Once again, we're safe swapping Scizor. Pretty much unless you see like a Steel type or like a Hard Fairy type, you're going to be safe swapping into Scizor just to uh, see what you can pull out of the back in a lot of situations. And the important thing is, is in those situations, we haven't really given away that we're Fire Fang. We might have implied it with the swap out, but some people still play games, uh, play matches, as if they're not sure what our Mawal has. Like the matchup earlier on where it turned out they had a low and sand slash in the back, which they saved for Mawal, and it turned out we were Fire Fang, so we just absolutely melted them. Um, so try to avoid giving that away in that first turn. Make sure you swap and don't mispress and let on that you're Fire Fang, because that gives them a lot of information on how to handle Mawal as the game plays out, what to say, swap into Scizor, stuff like that. So, Skymary came into meters there. We've got Registeel lined up against Azumarill. Again, this is not really looking good for us because we know they have Azumarill and Registeel lined up um, the wrong way around against our Mawile and our Azumarill. So, unless we manage to pull something exciting out here, this is not looking very good for us. We're going to throw a Hydro Pump. They're going to shield. They don't. The win condition here is really if we manage to get um, a shield out of this Registeel um, and then we manage to land like a double power-up punched Iron Head on the Azumarill, which is very unlikely to happen. We're going we're gonna to bait here. I said bait. We just want them. We don't want to knock them out. We want to um, leave them with some health to farm down. They've got energy, so we have to give up the shield here. And this just pretty much seals the fate, because even if this Azumarill doesn't have um, Hydro Pump, which it turns out it is going to have Hydro Pump, we just wouldn't be able to take even like a player of and an ice beam or anything like that, it would have just taken us out before we managed to get up enough damage on Azumarill. So, GG. Next matchup, Azumarill lead again. Swap into Scizor. See what they're going to do. This is the most common lead I was seeing was Azumarill lead, and we were just pivoting into Scizor every time. Go for the Trailblaze. Are they going to shield? They don't. Bang, beautiful. That is Azumarill very, very low. In fact, that's Azumarill pretty much down into Firefang range at this point but they do have some energy stored they've got pretty much an ice beam stored which we do need to bear in mind because mawal is quite squishy so that is a substantial amount of damage still we have to be aware of bringing a zoom to the little cario because we just want to bubble them down entirely see what they've got in the back we don't want to have to shield up the shadow ball so a zoom is a better option save the shields for mawal or for further on in the game see what we need to get that extra health on because they swapped out late they're stuck in this matchup. Their swap timer isn't up yet. So we're just going to try and shred them down with the Fire Fang as fast as possible. We get a nice big chunk of damage done on them. That really helps push this situation back towards our favour, even though they do still have Sand Slash now lined up with Azumarill. Can we force our way through this Azumarill? We can. We're just going to power up punch them and then force our way down because they either had to shield that power up punch or um, get farmed down. So it's just worth. it wasn't worth baiting with an Iron Head at all. We just wanted the extra damage. And at that point, Sand Slash would have just been melted. So GG's to the opponent. All right, next up, Escavalier lead. Absolutely beautiful for Shadow Mawal. Again, they're double weak to that Fire Fang damage. Are they going to swap out straight to where they are? Azumarill, we just bring in the Scizor. Because in this situation as well, like, I know it like it seems like it's not the best matchup because you have to shield up the charge modes from Azumarill. But you can force your way through this matchup because the Trailblaze buffs your damage, buffs those bullet punches up. And you outpace them quite handedly to the charge. Bang! Look at that monstrous damage. Like, Trailblaze is so nice on Shadow Scizor. Just for handling us up rolls like that. Like, it really just forces this matchup to be in our favour. Go for the Night Slash. They can probably survive this, but they won't survive the second one, which we will get to before they farm us down. Um, nope. No, we won't. Okay, that's fine. We're bringing Mao out to Fire Fang down. Show this up. Could be Drill Run. Would do big, big way to take us out, to be honest. And then they've got Flygon in the back. We've got a zoom roll. And no, we don't have ice, bone, ice Beam. Doesn't matter. We're slightly behind on energy. We've got no shields. We can still take two Scorching Sands because we are an XL zoom roll. You definitely do want to be running an XL zoom roll at this point in the Great League. You don't want to be running um, non-XL. Just the extra bulk really does help you drag out these matchups to get to more charge moves. And they're just going to go for more Scorching Sands. They need to get to another one to KO as Dragon Claw won't make the difference. If this is Dragon Claw, we should still make it to the player off. If they do for some reason take us out here, though, Mawal should still make it to an Iron Head and KO them anyway. So we should, we're looking pretty comfortable in that situation. And then we take out the Escavalier. GG's. Right. Next game. Togodomaru. Spicy. Perfect for us. Steel weak to that Fire Fang. They pivot out into Azumarill once again. And we bring in the Scizor. 
probably go straight for the Trailblaze, just make sure they don't sneak a free bubble through by timing throwing our charge move badly. They are going to shield, they do want to keep that Togan and Maru away from Mawal. So you know what, we're going to shield up as well, we're going to match that shield. And we're going to go probably for Trailblaze again, we're not expecting them to shield twice, and honestly we got... It, this move feels very quick to get to, so they do, they let it go through, bang, we get switch advantage, we're now double attack buffed. They've got Firefang Mawal in the back, so very handy that we did get switch advantage because our Azumarill is going to be quite comfortable there. Togan Amaro comes in, we bring in our Mawal, and we're just going to throw a power punch as soon as we get there. We don't want to farm down or anything like that. They will probably get to two charge moves here, so we are going to have to take something, and I'm not sure if it'd take us out. I wasn't sure exactly how this matchup played out, so we're going to shut up the first move. It is a wild charge, so that definitely would have taken us out. Second move comes as another wild charge, and discharge is wild charge, will take us out. Well, that's fine. Damage is done. We can bubble them down and we can just get to Hydro Pump against the Mawile, take them out and take the win. GG's. Now, if the opponent does swap in Azumarill and you counter it with Scizor, you need to be quick countering with Scizor because if they've got Ice Beam, the window that you outpace them by to the Trailblazers is quite narrow. Lucario Lead's going to pivot out into Weezing. We're going to bring in Scizor just because we know that Mawile is going to do better against Lucario, and this is probably their best Azumar Lancer, which is quite nice. We get the bullet punch, not the bullet punch, so I keep saying that, the knight slash buff, absolutely beautiful. We should just be able to punch them all the way down at this point. We did chill up an overheat, which is very nice for us. Lucario comes in. We're going to get to two knight slashes here because um, we've got that much extra energy. They shield up the first one. We buff again. Beautiful. We don't let this, we don't shield this up though. It's not worth it. As much as I want to shield that up, and throw a quadruple buffed Night Slash into this Lucario. It's not worth it. We just bring in Mawal. We just farm them all the way down. We save a shield for Mawal, for Azumarill, and see what's in the back. It is an opposing Azumarill, so we just throw Iron Head, do big damage, swap into Azumarill, and it's going to be our game. GG locked in. We've got shield advantage, we've got health advantage. It's in the bag. Another flag on lead. And for how many bad leads we're seeing, and the fact that we keep we're not winning every game, but we're winning a lot of games. It just goes to show how strong Cesar is. I think he's the MVP on this team. Him in a safe swap position is absolutely mega. Like, it's so strong. And then if you get the buff as well to add even more pressure, like, it's... People just aren't prepared to handle Cesar. Like, people aren't really bringing the fire-type fast move damage to really punish us all that hard. And it really is going in our favour. This opponent's going to do the same as a previous one did, where they managed to catch a Night Slash on Azumarill, but the energy is slightly different, so we should make this Trailblaze just before. Nope, not quite. This might be worth a shield. Um, Yeah, let's shield up and let's throw that Trailblaze. Nope, bait with the Night Slash. I suppose we've implied this is worth shielding with our shield. We do. Can we make it to the Trailblaze as well? Can we force switch advantage? We're going to get there. Nope, we're not. We're not going to get there. Rip. Okay, this kind of dooms us. In this game, that's why we bring in Mawal here rather than Azumarill because we're just hoping for some reason that Azumarill can one-shot both Flygon and whatever else they've got in the back since we've got Hydro Pump. Maybe we decide to catch, preserve it, Iron Head on Mawal. We're just going to try and think outside the box a little bit here. There's the Weezing in the back. This is pretty bad for us, but we do have Hydro Pump. So we want to land Hydro Pump on this Weezing, which might take them out, might not. I'm not 100% sure with this matchup, we're going to CMP tie here, that's kind of rough, we will survive this with like 1 HP and a dream, and get Hydro Pump off, and then it's just whether all the energy on Mawile is going to be enough to handle Flygon, so they farm us down, no stress, they're not going to get to a move here, uh, the Zoomerl comes in, so we're going to have to throw, okay, I think we played this wrong, we needed to throw the power up punch straight away at Zoomerl for the chip damage, and then hopefully fire fang them down, have a loaded Iron Head to throw at Flygon, whereas the way we played that out meant that they could just force this uh, Dragon Claw through because we weren't quite at the Iron Head, and they were going to take that win. Um, yeah, slight misplay by us, but I think we were going to struggle to win that game either way. Registeel lead, fantastic for us. They dip into Azumarill, we bring in the Scizor. Pretty standard by now. You're going to get sick of seeing this Scizor-Azumarill matchup, and also you're going to know it like the back of your hand because you'll be playing it so often. So many Azumarils in this cup. And Scizor is just going to be your answer to it. We land the Trailblaze. Fantastic. Shield up. Bullet punch them down. Then that puts us pretty solid position. They throw a Hydro Pump as well. So we can definitely bullet punch them down. And then we've just got Night Slashes to spam into this Registeel. Which doesn't hit too hard. 
But they're going to have to throw a charge move to take us out. And this is really going to be adding up because we're going to put them closer and closer into that quick fire fang down range as well. So we don't have to commit a shield on Mawile as well. We pull a Night Slash boost as well. So this Registeel really has to throw soon. They actually throw just before we get to another Night Slash. And this is tempting to shield, but we're not. We'll let it go. Preserve the shield for Mawile and Azumarill. See what they've got in the back. And it's a Tapu Finny. So we're just going to go for Power Up Punch here because... We really just need chip damage, and this is going to pressure them to shield anyway, just because they've only got Tapu Finny left, and these two shields have to go somewhere. So we shield up, we get a shield out of them with the first power up punch. This is worth a shield, because then we can get to an Iron Head and force them. So in this position, they either shield or they get KO'd, and they're going to give us that second shield. Fantastic. Now Azumarill can get to a player off, force it through, and give us the win. This Tapu Finny is loaded to the eyeballs with energy, but two Moon Blasts are not going to KO us. Um, the main risk is that they catch the player off on the register, so we need to be very careful of that. We get to the player off, they do swap, we don't throw, we're cold out. We hold the line, patient with it, and that's going to make the game ours. So we've got a couple of games left to take a look at. If you've got any questions about the team, the Pokemon, any particular matchups you want advice on, ask them in the comments down below and I will try and get back to you with an answer as and when I can. But second to last matchup, we got a zoomer on the lead. Once again, like I said, you get sick of seeing this matchup. Scissor, say swap, see what they want to do. Some Azumarils do swap out, some stay in, like we said. This one tries to catch, and I think they might have been trying to catch a Trailblazer. I think they were suspicious, but they're not going to pull it off. We're going to go straight for the Night Slash. Bang, second one's going to come through. If they let this through, it takes them out. We get switch advantage anyway, and the Azumarill matchup, the Mirror matchup, is now in our favour because the Bullet Punches have chipped them down a little bit. So, what are they going to bring in? The Azumarill comes back in. This point, we're just probably going to let Scizor go. Yeah, let Scizor go. We're just bringing our Azumarill into the mirror match, and the opponent's just going to surrender there. So I guess they didn't have a good answer for Azumarill in the back. Maybe they knew they were screwed. GG's. Now, this last matchup, Go Battle League does not need an excuse to be any more laggy than it already is, but we accidentally left our mobile hotspot on when we recorded this matchup, and we turn it off halfway through, and it definitely eases it up a little bit, but it does make the first half of this game a little bit sketchier for us. So... I'm going to leave you this matchup playing. Let me know what you guys think of the team. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you've been enjoying the videos, if you've been enjoying this team in particular. And as always, I will catch you absolute legends. Next oh, also, I'm in Liverpool next weekend for regionals. If you're there, I might see you there. And I'll catch you absolute legends next time.